This instructional tape is 40 minutes in length. It is recommended that you view the entire tape before you begin striping. The techniques, paints, solvents, and other materials used in this video are recommendations only. The user assumes full responsibility for their proper use. Bugler Striper makes pinstriping and detailed paint lining on any surface remarkably simple, and it's easy to use. Your Bugler Striper comes complete with a variety of wheel heads, enabling you to stripe in several widths, from extremely fine to broad strokes. Use most any creamy consistency paint to obtain excellent results on virtually any surface, from metal to cloth, even glass and wood. Flat or curved, smooth and porous surfaces, the Bugler Striping Tool gives you excellent results every time. Through the ages, pinstriping has evolved from archaic methods to the ultimate tool, the Bugler Striper. In 1913, S.B. Bugler rode his Indian motorcycle across the U.S. to the West Coast, where he later developed a revolutionary new painting tool that didn't drip provided paint on demand, and executed clean, accurate paint lines. In 1934, he patented his design, and even today continues to receive critical acclaim internationally for his invention. The tool is remarkably simple to use, with a unique wheelhead design that distributes paint evenly on any surface. The Bugler tool is safe and non-pressurized, it is not gravity fed, which enables paint to flow in any position, requires no tape for clean edges, and eliminates stick-on vinyl tape and brushes. The Bugler Striper's precision design and machining allows for an even layer of paint to be applied without variance in thickness or width. The Bugler Striping Tool consists of a paint barrel and friction fit wheel head. When rotated, the wheel distributes paint evenly by way of precision serrations. The plunger provides a supply of paint without pressurizing the barrel. Before loading your tool with paint, make sure the wheel turns freely and the plunger moves in the barrel with a smooth friction fit. To load the Bugler Striping Tool, remove the wheel head by firmly pulling it off. Pull the plunger back, allowing space for your paint. Most paint can be used directly from the can if it has a creamy consistency. Do not use paint that is too thick and won't pour. Do not use paint that is too thin and drips. Once you have filled the tool with the appropriate amount of paint, replace the wheel head by pressing it firmly onto the paint barrel. Be sure to align the wheel with the guide bar on the top as shown. Hold the tool vertically and gently expel the air in the barrel and lift the paint to the wheel by pressing the plunger upward until you see a small bead of paint at the wheel. Remember the wheel rotates to pick up paint in its serrations. Wipe off any excess paint before striping. Now you're ready to stripe. Using enough downward pressure for the wheel to roll, begin striping. You'll find the Bugler tool will stripe everything with ease. Depending on the Bugler kit you have purchased, the number of wheel heads and striping widths will vary from 1 8 of an inch or 3.2 millimeters to a very fine 1 64th of an inch or 0.4 millimeters. An optional kit includes wide and double striping wheel heads that will expand your striping range. These heads can also be purchased separately. The Bugler tool should only be used with the wheel rotating in this direction. 
Reversing the direction results in paint buildup at the base of the wheel. If this should happen, wipe clean. Before striping, prime the tool with a couple of short strokes, which coats the wheel with wet paint. Place the wheel down firmly and pull, rolling the stripe on your surface. Always keep the wheel flat to the surface. With a twist of the wrist, a curving even line can easily be applied. If you tilt the tool from flat position to its edge, you will achieve a tapered line, either straight or curved. Lifting at the end of the stroke produces a pointed tip. The speed that you pull the tool, or even changes in speed, have no effect on the stripe size. Even shaking the tool will not produce a drip. Only when the wheel rotates on a surface will paint be distributed. There are a variety of ways to hold and control the bugler tool. The most common is much like a utility knife where fingers are to the side opposite the thumb or with the index finger on top, much like a glass cutter. Keep your wrist loose for smooth curves. Holding the tool more vertically will allow for tighter turns. With the tool almost parallel to the surface, incredibly straight lines are easily achieved even without straight edge, while in a true vertical position you can obtain tight or small radius curves. The bugler tool will stripe over a thousand feet on a single barrel full of paint, depending on the wheel head size. However, for extensive practicing or mural painting, a squeeze bottle is handy for refilling. The bugler striper will paint at any angle or position. Experiment with your bugler tool to explore all of the possibilities. Start with a pad of paper and practice some freehand designs. The guide arm will be thoroughly explained later, but try it out by inserting it into either side of the bugler tool and practice some parallel lines to the edge of your pad. On a pad of paper, practice some freehand straight lines. Then try some tapers. Tips are done by pulling a taper away from you. Then come back toward yourself, starting with the taper, and pulling into a full width as you separate the lines. Run curved or straight lines parallel to each other, starting and stopping with tips on each end. Finally, do lots of non-stop figure eight, starting large and working smaller. Try to keep the stripe width constant and your wrist loose. If there is a secret to learning freehand striping, it's simply to practice the five basics first, then combine them for your designs. Flames can be a dynamic graphic element as well as a great learning exercise. Using these three basics, create a series of flames by repeating the pattern of curve, taper, tip, curve, taper, tip over and over again. There are many different techniques for painting flames. Try to keep your movements smooth, your lines of even width, your tips clean, and your overall design balanced. These techniques will help you master the bugler tool for many painting applications. The weight, size, and balance of the bugler striper allows for superior control and precise detail. 
By simply rotating your wrist or twisting your fingers, you could obtain a variety of painting effects. Sharp width is maintained by keeping the wheel flat on the surface. This is easily done by pressing the index finger over the wheel and utilizing the little finger and thumb for stability. This is an excellent method for long, straight, or slightly curved lines. One method for following a guideline or for outlining is to turn the tool around and hold it in a vertical position, pushing the tool away from you using the wheel or wheel head as a sight. Direction can be controlled by simply twisting the tool with your fingertips. Be sure to hold the tool in a vertical position to the surface to maintain line width. In this example, the tool is held vertically to the tank at all times. Your work can remain stationary, or as in this example, the tank is rotated as the painter applies a stripe that remains consistent regardless of the speed of application. As you complete your stripe, keep an eye on the starting point to ensure a smooth connection. Typically, the beginner will hold the bugler tool like a pen. This may be preferred by some, but severely limits the control and versatility of the tool. Here the pen grip is used. Notice at the curve this painter is forced to change the position of her elbow and shoulder. Here are two recommended methods for following a guideline. First, the tool is held parallel to the surface and pulled next to the guideline. The vertical grip is shown and the tool reversed, then pushed on the line using the wheel as a sight. Here a guideline is drawn on a motorcycle tank using a water-soluble Stabilo marking pencil. This painter has chosen to use a straw to fill the bugler tool. This is particularly useful with small quantities of paint. First the tool is primed with a couple of short painting strokes to wet the wheel. The vertical grip is used siding directly down the wheel. Again, the painter is rotating the tank, however you may elect to keep the item stationary as you work around it. Remember to hold the wheel flat to the surface to ensure a constant line width. As you approach the starting point of your line, look ahead for a seamless matchup.
For the second line, the painter will use the shoulder located next to the wheel as a site to maintain an even space between the two lines. Push the tool forward with a steady motion, keeping the shoulder of the wheel head alongside the edge of the first stripe. On your second stripe, you can use a different color or wheel size. You may want to let your first stripe dry before painting your second stripe. This will enable you to correct mistakes without affecting the first stripe. Various guidelines can be created and followed using the techniques you have learned with your bugler tool. Drawing an axis line with starting and stopping points allows for easy symmetrical shapes. For a precise starting point, extend your finger as an anchor point before touching the tool to the surface. Here, this technique is used on a wooden spoked wheel. You'll find that the bugler tool can be used in a variety of methods on virtually any surface with rewarding and profitable results. Use your creativity to explore the countless applications for the bugler striping tool. Using the techniques you've learned, try striping your toolbox. Accent numbers, letters, create signage, outline graphics. And even detail models. If you wish, you can use tape as a reference line. Lay down a section of tape, either straight or curved. With your index finger on top of the tool, pull a line parallel to the tape. Then reverse the tool and try painting a stripe parallel to the tape using the vertical grip. This is particularly useful on large areas such as trucks and larger vehicles. And you can count on an extremely straight line when the tape is pulled tight. When using tape as a reference line, keep your eye on the space and maintain an even distance between the tape and the stripe. If you find that the space is increasing or decreasing, make a gradual adjustment and the correction won't be noticed. Your bugler striper comes with various adjustable guide arms that help you effortlessly paint parallel to any edge. Simply adjust the guide to the distance you want to stripe from the edge. A thumb screw located on top of the tool secures the guide when in position. As you pull the striper, be sure to keep the guide touching the edge for a precise parallel line to that edge. Be sure to hold the paint barrel parallel to the edge you're following. Loosen the thumb screw and readjust and secure the guide arm for an additional parallel line. Wheels and rims are easily painted by rotating them while keeping the bugler tool with its guide in a set position. Guide arms are designed to be used on either side of the tool for greater versatility.
Some paint comes in small containers ready to pour. A creamy consistency will work best with a bugler tool. Here a guide arm is used to create delicate detailing to a cupboard door. Pinstriping a bicycle frame takes only minutes using guide arms for perfect accuracy. Masking tape at the beginning and end of the line help ensure a clean end to the line. Simply stop and lift the tool for a clean rounded end, or tilt the tool to one side or the other for a tapered end. To precisely determine the location of tapered or square endings, it is suggested that you use low profile tape at either an angle for tapered ends or right angle for square ends. Simply run the tool over the tape and gently lift the tape from the surface while the paint is still wet. Here masking tape is used to obtain a clean flat edge to the beginning of a line. Masking tape can also be used to create a clean break in your striping work. A detailed connection can then be added. And remember to keep your eye on the point of contact at the wheel and surface for greater accuracy. Here this technique is used on the bike frame for a custom finish. For boulder line weights, use one of the wide wheel heads. To avoid inconsistent lines that could occur by twisting the tool, use your index finger on top and keep the tool flat for perfect wide striping. The double striper is also very useful. Like the wide wheel head, if the tool rocks to either side, the wheels will not be in contact with the surface. To ensure consistent line thickness, keep the tool flat to the surface and use your index finger as shown to maintain wheel contact. The double wheel head is ideal for use where a standard single color double stripe is called for. With the little finger as a stabilizer, the double head creates the perfect effect you're after. Here masking tape is used as a sight guide to ensure correct alignment to the car's body. To keep the bugler tool flat, let your little finger lightly slide along as you move across the surface with the index finger holding the wheel in contact with the surface. Again, a small piece of masking tape can ensure a perfect flat edge to the end of your line. Narrow masking tape is more suitable for a reference line when striping tight curves. With little effort, you can shape your tape into any reference line, then follow the path with the bugler tool. Remember to keep your body in the most comfortable position to avoid straining. The bugler tool will execute a consistent line weight regardless of the speed at which you stripe, so relax and enjoy. Remove your masking tape and behold your masterpiece. For perfect striping on cars, trucks, or any steel surface, use Bugler's flexible magnetic guide. This will assist you in painting flawless straight lines or long smooth curves. Make sure you have your Bugler striping tool, lettering enamel paint, and magnetic guide along with masking tapes, clean rags, thinner, wax and grease remover. Apply wax and grease remover liberally to a rag and rub the surface to be striped vigorously. Then follow with a clean cloth to eliminate any remaining solvent and dissolved wax from painted surface. One method for quickly aligning the magnetic guide is to first snap out a strip of masking tape about one inch below the striping area. Follow the body contour as you go. 
This technique will conform to the car's shape and yield excellent results. Smooth tape down by hand. Place the magnetic guide above the masking tape along the full length of the car. Moving from one end to the other, gently push the magnetic guide to the edge of the masking tape. Now your track is in perfect position. An alternate way to align the magnetic guide is to simply lay it on the side of the car from one end to the other. Sliding a ruler along the top and bottom edge, sight down the magnetic guide as you go. When using the guide arm, be sure to put pressure on the paint wheel, not the guide arm, as this can tend to lift the wheel slightly from the surface. Instead, lift the guide with a slight twist, allowing the wheel to make flat contact with the surface to be painted. When using the edge rather than the track of the magnetic guide, it's a good idea to use your finger under the edge opposite the guide arm to prevent the magnetic guide from moving. If the guide arm comes in contact with the car's surface, wrap it with tape. Some painters prefer the guide arm on the opposite side of the magnetic guide. Before striping, get into a position where you can see the wheel making contact with the surface of the car. Begin striping by placing the guide arm in position on the magnetic guide and the wheel flat onto the car's surface. Keep your arm extended in front of you. This will keep the tool parallel to the magnetic guide. Use your other hand to keep your balance. As you move from front to back, be sure to remember to smoothly walk backward in a continuous motion with a toe heel step one foot behind the other. Do not shuffle and keep your painting arm extended. The only reason to move your extended arm would be to avoid a mirror or door handle or when in a confined workspace. With very little effort, you'll be striping with professional results. If you have a second magnetic guide, you can proceed to the other side of the car without delay. To begin a second line in a point with the original line, Readjust the guide arm for the second stripe, place the guide arm in the magnetic guide track, and slide the end of the magnetic guide up to converge the two lines and begin striping. This second stripe can be of a different size and color. There is no need to stripe a car in sections. The entire side should be done in one pass. At a seam, simply slow down and continue on. When slowing for obstacles such as mirrors and door handles, your stripe width will remain consistent. Walk with a smooth, continuous motion the entire length of the car. Even if you need to pause momentarily, your stripe will be perfect.